Hello YouTube, L Players here, and today we're back with a brand new video. Uh, this time I'm finally getting around to talking about the Nintendo Switch. I'm sure most of you are probably sick to death of hearing about it, uh, but just in case there's a chance that you've not heard about it yet, or you've not seen one of the millions of videos up on YouTube, or maybe you've just got the internet for the first time in your life, and somehow my channel is the first thing you've ever stumbled across. <laughs> Congratulations if that's true, by the way, you're, you're very lucky. <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically I just want to talk about the Switch, my first impressions, what I think about it, whether I'm excited or not, my sort of thoughts on it but also more than that I was actually lucky enough to get invited to the UK premiere event uh, that was held in London for the actual switch so it was kind of a, a pre-launch uh, VIP or invite only event I managed to get in through winning a competition uh, but most of the people there were sort of press and journalists and media personnel that were given an early look uh, to sort of review and try out the system to kind of create a bit of a buzz and hype around it so I've got this sort of added benefit of having actually played on the system I managed to get hands-on in all of the different ways that you can sort of have the the console set up, whether it's docked, portable, that kind of thing, and I also got a chance to play quite a few of the games there, uh, some of them that aren't even going to be launch games as well, so it was it was a pretty exciting event, uh, basically the point of this video is to share my thoughts on that event, the experience, what I thought of the system, what I thought of the games, uh, and also what my just general thoughts are on the Switch and whether I'm excited about it. So... First thing that we're just going to sort of recap over here, um, most of you are probably going to know a lot of this stuff already, but basically just a recap of the information that's already out about the system itself. So at the moment, we know that release date, March the 3rd, this year is when it's coming out. Uh, Price-wise, in the UK, we're looking at £279.99, uh, and in the US, it's going to be $299.99. So US price, to me, living in the UK, that seems fairly cheap if you convert it into pounds. Uh, the UK price, just under 300 quid I mean it's it's not terrible it's, it's, it's kind of probably what we should have expected I think that's probably hurt a little bit by the fact that there were a lot of rumors going around uh, in the UK that we could potentially be looking at a 250 pound price tag uh, some rumors even saying it was going to be as low as 200 pound which is kind of when I heard that I was thinking that would be absolutely incredible uh, anyone that kind of like wasn't sure for that price point it's like it's a no-brainer. You'd, you'd be picking it up day one. It, it would be so cheap. Obviously, that's not the case. 27999 I still think, for what the system is and what it does, is, is a pretty reasonable price. Uh, one thing we don't know, which is a kind of... Kind of a big issue, I'd say, at this point, is we don't know any of the actual sort of detailed specs and, and workings of the inner machine itself. So we don't know things like processing power and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the exact hardware capabilities of the machine. It's all sort of very vague. Uh, we do know that it runs in 1080p at 60 frames per second uh, when docked. So docked mode is when it's uh, set up on its stand and it's plugged into the TV and you're playing it like a normal home console. So 1080p, 60 FPS, that's that's good. That's, that's very good. You know, it's not sort of 7. 20 it's not lower than that it, it's gonna have good graphics it's gonna look good it's gonna be you know it's gonna be a, a very uh, what's the word competent it's gonna be a very competent system to sort of look at uh, the other thing we know is when it's not docked, so when you've got it in portable mode or you've got the screen out and you're using the Joy-Con separately, uh, then it's going to be down to 720p, but still at 60 frames per second. So the 60 FPS on the portable is still pretty impressive, and at 720p, for the size of the screen, I think that's going to be absolutely fine. So in terms of that kind of thing, I'm not worried. Uh, it would be good to know a little bit more about the specs of the machine and find out a bit more about the hardware power and stuff that's going on, uh, but I'm guessing that will all come... Hopefully sooner rather than later, but back to what we know now. So prices from some of the accessories now This is where things are, are kind of to be frank a little bit ridiculous in my opinion uh, So the the joy-con controllers so these are if you've seen the pictures I'll put some up on screen, uh, but these are the two detachable uh, controllers almost like the sort of the Wii um, nunchuck type things uh, but there's basically one of those for each side of the console and to buy a set of those separately which you will need to do if you want to play two player games that use the Joy-Con uh, that's going to cost you £74.99 in the UK now that is is not far off 100 quid uh, for two tiny controllers that it's basically one controller split into two but I mean that is that is an exceptionally high price uh, and that's definitely a little bit disappointing uh conversely as well if you were to say you lost one uh, one of your joy con controllers and you just needed to buy either the left one or the right one just that on its own would still be 43 quid so that is i mean yeah the, the accessories are expensive guys that's there's no way to get around that uh the pro controller so this is actually 64 pound 99 uh when you think of it as basically 
from my sort of view on this is it's not like another console's pro version of a controller. So if the PS4 or the Xbox bring out like pro or elite controllers, uh, they're basically like souped up controllers that have all these like added features and buttons and like configurable buttons and super sensitive analog sticks and all this crazy kind of stuff that most normal gamers don't particularly care about. It's more for your sort of competitive gamers and the people that are like really into their Twitch shooters and stuff. Uh, they're normally a lot higher priced. Uh, because they're adding a lot of extra stuff that not many people want, right? Well, so obviously there's a lot of people that want them, but the, the, the casual gamer doesn't need them. But if you do want that next deck up, that's when you go to it. Now, my view on the Pro Controller for the Switch is this is not filling that niche in the market. It's not, it's not for that same purpose. The Pro Controller for the Switch is for those people that feel maybe feel like the, the controls on the Joy-Con or the holding the sort of tablet pad is a bit gimmicky and they just want to feel like they're playing a regular console with a, a, a normal feeling control, right? So that's why you would buy the Pro Controller for this. Now, that being said, buying it as a, just a normal controller for $64.99, that's still pretty high, although it's not it's not as ludicrous as perhaps the Joy-Con controllers, right? Uh, but if you, I mean, I, I did get a chance to play with a Pro Controller, so, you know, it, it's not a bad controller at all by any means, but price-wise, I'd still say that's a little high. Uh, wrist straps, four ninety nine, dollars kind of irrelevant, really. I mean, that's they're not going to be less than that, and they're, for some, for some reason, out of all of this stuff, that's kind of the price that you'd expect for wrist straps, right? Everything else seems a little bit high, arguably other than the console, which is probably about right. Uh, battery life, so we've been told that the battery life can be anywhere from 2.5 hours to 6 hours. So this is when you're playing uh, away from your docking station, you've not got it like hooked up to the TV and stuff. It's when you're out and about or when you're just like sitting in another room and it's detached. Uh, so for that portable play playtime, you're looking at 2.5 to 6 hours. I think they've said Zelda Breath of the Wild will be 3 hours. Uh, so that's 3 hours of like solid gameplay of Zelda running without any problems. Now a lot of people are kind of moaning about this. Uh, games that aren't as intense as Zelda are obviously going to be uh, potentially somewhere up to six hours. I doubt there's going to be many games that will be six hours. In reality, it's probably going to be around the three to four hour mark for most games. For me, for a handheld that has such a high quality screen and a big screen and a pretty powerful system, if you're thinking of, of it as a handheld, which is kind of not, it, it kind of is a portable home console, right? It's, it's much more powerful than anything handheld-wise that's out at the moment. So it is kind of... I'd say that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, it also has the added benefit of having a USB Type-C charge port, so you can sort of plug into that to give it like the lightning, super fast charge speed. So if you've got one of those uh, portable uh, charging battery things that you just plug into whatever your, your phone and stuff to charge up, then, I mean, this is going to be fine for you, right? And if you don't have one, like, you can pick them up for like 10 quid from Amazon, just like a charge brick. Uh, fine, it's not as portable if you've got to carry that around, but if you, I mean, really, if you're going to be away for a long time, you're probably going to have something like that with you anyway, so... I feel like this is definitely definitely acceptable, especially when you pair it with the fact that devices like that are so cheap and pretty pretty good nowadays. So you're not going to have too many problems, even if you do want to play away from home for quite a long time. Uh, so in terms of the versions that are coming out on launch, so there's two versions that have been released. Uh, there's the standard all black, all well black slash grey system where the the Joy-Con controllers on the side are just grey and everything matches. That to me is the, the most uh, aesthetically pleasing one. It's the one that looks best. It's slick. It's smooth. It all sort of matches up. Uh, but the one that actually, from from what I'm hearing, is seeming to be more popular at the moment is the neon red and neon blue version, uh, which is basically the whole system is the same normal grey colour but you just get different colour Joy-Cons on the side of it, so one of them red, one of them blue. It seems a bit of a mismatch to me, but I guess like the bright colours, some people really like that, and it seems to be the one that pre-orders are going quickest on if you are trying to get hold of it. Uh, other than that, so we know it's got 32 gig of memory internally. That is pretty low, it is pretty poor, but it also supports micro, micro SD, um, so you can just buy a memory card for it. You can, I think it, it supports memory cards up to 2 terabytes. I think the biggest memory card that you can actually buy commonly on the market at the moment is around 512 gigabytes something like that so it, it supports a size of memory card that's not even like commercially common or out on the market yet so so it's going to have like longevity in terms of being able to upgrade the memory uh, and these memory cards are uh, you know some of the smaller ones are pretty cheap they're, they're going to be coming down in price all the time now more and more of different companies are making them 
this is going to be a pretty inexpensive way to up your your memory. Uh, the other key thing here is that the games don't actually install on the system. So it's not like the PS4 or the Xbox where you actually like put a game in and you have like a big uh, day one like 10 gig, 20 gig install that actually gets downloaded onto the system and takes up a load of space. Uh, so I'm assuming the actual system itself is only going to save your game memory and maybe like software settings and config configuration and stuff like that. Uh, so it's not going to be downloading massive game files. So that's another reason why memory is not going to be like a massive issue. Uh, and even even if you are one of these people that's having loads and loads and loads of games saved, you can just upgrade the memory really easily. So that, for me, I'd say is a tick. Um, and that's So I think in terms of what we actually know about the system at the moment, that's pretty much everything. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to actually go into, and this is probably more where this video is going to be a little bit different from the others, is the actual Nintendo Premiere London event itself. So what actually happened, what was in there, what was it like, what was my experience. So... Uh, well, the first thing I have to say is probably not a good thing, actually. So we, it was meant to start at half eight in the morning. So we got there maybe like 15, 20 minutes early. It was freezing cold. So it was at the Apollo Theatre in London. Uh, freezing cold outside in the morning. Loads of people like crowded around waiting to get in. Uh, and I think they were like 40 minutes late opening up. So... Maybe they had some problems with their setup or something like that. Something wasn't working or people were late arriving for the staff or something. But yeah, they, they opened like 40 minutes late, which was a bit of a pain. Uh, they did extend the actual session. So the session was meant to end at, uh, I think it was meant to end at around 12 or 1. Uh, they basically extended it by like 40 minutes to make up for the time they lost in the morning. So they did kind of make up for it, but it was still a bit annoying at the time in the morning. Uh, going in, once we actually got into the doors, this was one of the like first things that I thought was really cool. They basically had kind of like a like a museum almost. On the way in, they had like corridors, and they were lined with all of the old Nintendo systems in little display cases. So you had like the NES, the SNES, all the different Game Boys, the DSs, Micro Pocket um, Game Boys, everything. Like all of the old Nintendo consoles and systems was all there, like walking in. So that was like straight away hit you right in the feels. Like Nintendo goes straight after that nostalgia factor, bringing back all the good gaming memories that you've got. Uh, so like straight away going in, it was just like everyone was getting hyped up and excited and thinking like, yeah, we love Nintendo. Woo! So that was, I mean, that was definitely clever on their part, but it was also like, it was pretty cool going into the event. Uh, when we got in there, it was pretty basic, so we weren't really sure what to expect. I didn't know if there was going to be a presentation or like some talks or something before we got to go and play the games. Uh, but it was basically like your standard gaming convention type thing. There were just loads of booths set up all around the room that we were allowed into. Uh, you could get like food and drinks and stuff from the bar. And uh, yeah, all of the booths were basically for a different game. Uh, the Zelda had Zelda had a huge, huge booth at the back of the room, like the back of the sort of theatre bit that we were in. It uh, had a, by far like the biggest setup out of all of the other games. Like it was definitely the centre point and the thing that they were trying to hype up the most. Uh, it was pretty cool. They actually had a massive tree uh, in the middle of the display, and it was like I don't know, it was some sort of robotic tree, and every now and again it would like shake and move. It was pretty cool. It's hard to explain. It was a bit weird, but it was pretty. It was like it did grab your attention, so it was quite cool. Uh, one of the things I will say about the event itself, I don't think they planned it as well as they could have. So the the way the booths were positioned, to be honest, was pretty awful. So a lot of the gaming booths were like too close together. So people like queuing for one would be like bumping into a queue for another one. And there was like there was just no room to queue at some of the booths at all. So that could have been done better. There definitely wasn't enough space in this venue for the amount of people that they invited. The other thing was, time-wise, there was just not enough time to play all the games that they had out. There weren't an awful lot of games there, uh, but with the amount of people there, they're just, like, even then, even if you just quickly tried to get in a queue straight away and have a very, like, two minutes on a game and then jump to the next one, there just was not enough time to get through all of the games. And a big part of this were some of the bigger games, so Splatoon 2, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Zelda Breath of the Wild. Wild, all of those had absolutely huge queues so as soon as the place opened as soon as we were allowed in within like minutes the queue for Zelda got to a two hour long queue and they instantly closed the queue so they said nobody else is allowed to queue up until some of the queue is clear, uh, cleared out so you'll have to come back later so this was like this was at like not by nine in the morning and they basically said come back at 11 and you might be able to queue up then uh, so I did manage to in the end I did manage to queue up and get on Zelda but it was a two hour wait when I did get into that queue now you can imagine it was it was a similar case for Splatoon 2 and Mario Kart not as bad but it was like an hour an hour plus for those two games as well and when you've only got a couple of hours like it was only like it wasn't even half a day session uh, to get around those three games on their own was like almost impossible to do in the time so you had no chance of getting around those and all of the other games as well uh, which was kind of weird because they gave everybody this stamp system and I'll put a picture of that as well for you to see 
Uh, but they basically gave us this little card, and when we played a game at a booth, we then had to go and get the, the person at the booth to stamp the card to say, yep, you've played this thing. And then at the end, if you managed to collect all the stamps, they gave you a little Nintendo uh, limited edition just for the event pin badge. So we did manage to get two of those, me and my girlfriend. Uh, and But this was basically because at the end, they realised that they'd messed up so badly with their planning for this, uh, that people at the booth just were like, Look, give me your card and I'll stamp all the rest, there's just not enough time. So that was pretty cool of the people working there, so everyone still got their badge, nobody was upset. Uh, but it was kind of upsetting that people didn't get to play all of the games. Uh, so yeah, there's that. But now, with that said, so in terms of the boosts that were there, so I've talked about Zelda, Splatoon 2, and Mario Kart. They were the sort of big ones. Uh, but there were a lot of smaller games too that had cool booths. So uh, there was uh, a booth for ARMS. ARMS being the big, new, exciting, fresh Nintendo IP that's came out. Now, after their like, success of Splatoon, 2, uh, Splatoon 1, sorry... They've obviously started thinking, yeah, now we can we can do this. We can start making brand new games with new ideas and hope that they do well. So ARMS was there. That was pretty exciting. Uh, there were a couple of publisher games as well, like third-party stuff. I think there was uh, Disgaea, so fans of that series will be happy that it's being ported over to the Switch. Uh, there were a couple of other ports, some Sonic games, some racing games, stuff like that. Uh, nothing too exciting. That was that was probably the big disappointing thing for me about the event in general is there wasn't really anything exciting when it came to third party stuff. So Skyrim wasn't there. We know that it's been announced. We know that it's coming out, but it wasn't at the it wasn't at the event for some reason. Uh, it, which is kind of odd because some of the games that were there have got like release dates like right at the end of 2017. So some of these games that we got to play are not coming out at launch. They're a long way off, but they still had. A part of the game that was playable for people that went to the event to play. So it was kind of odd not to see some of that third party stuff. I don't know why they did that. I don't know if there's those games just aren't ready yet. Or if the the Nintendo wanted to keep it focused mostly on their games. I, I really don't know what was going on there. But there just wasn't any third party stuff to get excited about. Uh, the other thing that was kind of weird. So Mario Odyssey... Uh, obviously, everyone's like quite excited about this at the moment, apart from that odd-looking city level. Uh, Mario Odyssey was there, but it wasn't a game. It was just the trailer that everyone had seen online. So they basically had like little cinema seats and a Mario pop-up figure. Uh, you could go and you could watch the trailer. It was kind of like, yeah, you get excited about it, and they'd talk to you about like what was going to be in the game, and they'd try and get you excited about it, but there wasn't... you couldn't play it, so it was kind of like, meh. People weren't like too happy with that, I don't think, overall. So yeah, that was pretty much the event in general. So now I want to talk a bit more... Uh, about the actual console itself and the fact that I got hands-on with it. So how did it feel? How did it play? After actually holding it, playing it, trying out a few games and trying out all the different ways that it could be played, what do I think of the Switch as a system? So the first thing that really struck me was just how neat, small and compact the form factor was. So it looks and feels really good quality. It feels really nice to hold. It looks really, really sleek actually. And if you go back and look at the Wii U... I mean, I'm sorry if you love that system, but it was a pretty bulky, ugly system. It didn't make much sense. The Wii U gamepad is, like, absolutely ridiculously bulky, not comfortable to hold. This is, like, you don't have to worry about that at all. It's kind of hard to tell from the pictures that you've seen, but when you see it in real life and you hold it, it feels great. It's small, it's light, but it still feels, like, good quality and very premium. So I don't think there's going to be any problems with it feeling, like, bulky and horrible. It looks great. I, I can't say anything about it other than it does look very good. Now, in terms of actually playing on the system, so there's three key main ways that you can play. So there's docked, which is hooked up to your TV as a home console, basically. So you think your PS4, think think all your other home consoles that you've had throughout your life. It's just plugged into the TV, use the Joy-Con as the controllers or the Pro Controller or whatever control method you want to use. But you're playing at home on the, on the TV. Uh, that played... Very well. I was so in terms of graphics, probably the best looking thing there was Zelda, of, as you'd probably expect. Uh, it, and I've got to say, it looked very good. So on the day, I think they did mention that it was running in, uh, it was running in 1080p, but only at 30 frames per second on the demo that was there. So they they did stress it. They did make a very big point of saying, look, for this demo at the moment, it's it's there. We're not at the launch yet. We're still early. This particular demo build that you've got is running at 30 frames per second, but on the actual console when it's released, it will be running at a solid, smooth 60 frames per second. So as long as that's true, that's definitely something to be happy about. Uh, and I'll be honest, it, even even though it wasn't running at 60 frames per second, it looked and played very smooth. It looked great. I don't think anyone would look at the console and the games and be like, there's a problem with how this looks. It looked good. It definitely looked very good for a Nintendo system. And Zelda, of all of them, probably looked good for... 
I mean, you could look at that as a game, compare it to an Xbox One and a PS4 game, and, and it looks beautiful. Now, granted, the art style is it's not like a hyper-realistic art style, so it's hard to compare uh, to, to more sort of realistic-looking games. But I feel like, from looking at the games that were there, graphics aren't going to be a huge problem. I think it's going to do okay in that department. <laughs> so that was playing it as a, as a console, a home console. Uh, now, the other main one was the portable. So this is basically where you take out the sort of gamepad, if you like, with the Joy-Cons attached to it, and use it as a little tablet. Almost like the Wii U gamepad, but much smaller and neater, and it felt a lot more comfortable. Now, the first thing I've got to say to this is switching between the two was so slick. I mean, it, it was hard not to be excited about it. You literally pull the pad out of the docking system... And within like two seconds, it's gone from being on the big screen to on the little screen, and it's running perfectly. There's no pause, there's no load time in between, it just works. It is literally that instant, you pull it out, you're playing. You put it back in, it's back on the TV playing. And it just works, it's flawlessly executed, it worked really well, and it was like, wow, that was impressive. Like, when I did it for the first couple of times, I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, the other thing is the screen quality on the 720p smaller screen on the handheld pad looks absolutely phenomenal. It... Honestly, like, it was hard to see a difference between playing on the screen to the little screen. It was that good. Now, the little screen is going to be running at 720 and not 1080, so there is a difference. Uh, it should still be running at 60 FPS. Uh, it's just slightly downscaled. On that smaller screen, I really don't think you're going to be able to tell. It, it, it honestly looks like you're playing a fully powered console game on the little handheld tablet. And that, that is impressive. No matter how, which way you look at it, it that's, that's an impressive thing. And it's definitely something to be excited about, especially when you think we're going to be getting games like Skyrim, uh, you know, some of the third-party games that we might have loved in the past, now being able to take those as a full experience, no, like, handicap, no cut-down version, no terrible graphics or bad textures, the full game on a portable system, that is exciting, and I am excited about that. Now, the third way to play, this is basically where you take off the two Joy-Con controllers, you unclip them from the screen itself, and then you just have the screen standing up on its own. Uh, so you, this is basically for your games that have motion controls, so you can, like, move your hand, hands about and, like, punch and swing and shoot your gun and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, this, honestly, I was really pleasantly surprised by, surprised by how good these controllers were. These Joy-Con controllers, the, the, they made a really big deal about this advanced rumble technology, and it sounded kind of stupid. It was like, yeah, motion controls are kind of dead at this point. People aren't really that excited about them. They're only really used now to add to, like, VR games. Do we really care? And I have to say, they feel fantastic. They're far more responsive than anything at the moment that I've played with touch, uh, like, touch or movement control, motion sensors. They're, like, leagues and leagues above it. It just feels like we're finally at the point where we've nailed motion sensors and motion control it, it works really well it feels intuitive uh they basically had these things on the one two switch like tech demo game uh you can hold the controller and on the screen it shows a little box and inside that box are some marbles and you can't see how many balls are in there but if you move the controller it genuinely feels like you're holding the box with the marbles in and you can tell how many are in there like you can feel the movement of the balls as you move left and right up and down you can shake them like it, it it sounds it sounds very strange but when you were there i mean this this clearly wasn't made to be like a, a fun exciting game this was definitely done to show off look we've nailed it with this controller and this rumble functionality and how how real this feels when you're holding it it feels great it was definitely impressive uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of it about the three ways to play. Um, th so the only other thing I'll say about controllers, and I touched on it briefly, was the Pro Controller. The Pro Controller, to me, of all the ways I played, was kind of the one that surprisingly felt a little off. Like, it, it didn't feel as good. Uh, and it, it, it may well 100% just be that taking taking the time to get used to this new controller that I've not used before. Uh, and it, it probably is that. But it kind of felt... Like it was a squashed version version of an Xbox One controller. It felt a bit too long and like a bit too flat and square, kind of. It looks really normal. So when you see a picture, you just think, oh yeah, normal Pro Controller. But it, it did feel a bit odd. Now I'm hoping that's just like, like I say, I just need to get used to using it. But for me, I was like, oh, this doesn't feel great. But I didn't have that at all with any of the other ways to play, which is odd. So with the Joy-Con separately, they felt great. Uh, and with it as like the tablet, the gamepad, that felt fantastic. So no complaints there, really. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of how it felt to play. That's that's my sort of impression of the system itself and how it feels and looks and and just the sort of vibe that I got from it. Uh, I guess the next thing that I want to talk about briefly is the actual games that I got to play. 
so the first thing I'm going to say on, on games at all before I actually go into any of them is the price for games is definitely high. So £60 UK is the price that we're looking at for your your big titles, your main games. So things like Zelda, uh, I'm guessing things like Arms, Platoon 2, Mario Kart, they're going to come out and they're going to retail at 60 quid, which is is pretty damn expensive. It's more than most PS4 games. It's more than most Xbox One games. I mean, for that price, they're going to have to be bringing out some really good uh, Nintendo first-party games to get me to want to spend 60 quid on them. Zelda, fine. They're not going to have any problems selling that. Splatoon 2, I think after how well the first one did, they won't have any problems selling that. And Mario Kart is the same. Even if people aren't happy about paying 60 quid for it, they're going to want that game and they'll go out and they'll buy it. Are they going to be able to charge 60 quid for some of these other games that people aren't already excited about? Things like ARMS, things like any other new games they bring out. That's, I think a lot of people are probably going to be hoping that they can get a pre-owned copy of games for that price unless they change that at some point. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's price-wise, kind of get that out of the way. Now the next thing is the actual games themselves. So the first game that everybody wants to hear about, everybody's excited about, Zelda Breath of the Wild... I don't think there's anything going to be surprising here. It To me, like, I've played some of the Zelda games before. I'm not, like, a hardcore, diehard Zelda fan. I haven't played every single one. Uh, I've played some of them. I've enjoyed the ones I have played. I get it. It's a great game, and people absolutely love it. I think if you're a Zelda fan, you're going to love this more than any other Zelda game that you played. Uh, I think if you're not a Zelda fan, this is a game that you are still going to be interested in. So for me, I'm kind of on the fence. Like I, I like Zelda, but it's not like something I would go and buy a system for on its own. Uh, but this game, to me, like the only like the only way I can think to explain this to someone who hasn't played it already is it's basically it, it feels like a new Skyrim game, but set in the Zelda universe. It's, it's a massive open world game. It has that feel like you can just go anywhere, do anything, pick up weapons, pick up armor, fight random enemies, get into random encounters, go to like random uh, viewpoints and monuments and settlements and explore, basically. It has that open world feel that people get excited about, and it runs smoothly as hell. The gameplay felt fluid, it felt good. The fighting, the combat all felt really intuitive and really fun. And it looks beautiful. Uh, the only thing I will say about it that was kind of disappointing, which I hadn't realised until I actually got to play it, uh, was this. So I was kind of expecting you'd be able to swim across the lakes and stuff in this big open world. Uh, you can't actually swim in the game. Uh, so for some reason, whatever the reason is, Link did not learn to swim properly. You can basically, you have like a stamina bar. Uh, and and this, this, the stamina bar is used for everything. So for sprinting, uh, when you're doing like power attacks and fighting, it runs down and you have to let it charge up and stuff. But when you're swimming, you have this really short, it only lasts maybe like 10 seconds. You can swim into the water for 10 seconds, but then if you don't get out before that stamina stamina bar goes down, you instantly drown. And it's not like you slowly start sinking, you instantly die just like that. So you can't really properly swim in the game, which was a bit weird. I know that's a very minor nitpicky thing to pick up on, but to me it's kind of like, oh, that's a bit, mm. you know, in a, in a game like this, I was kind of expecting you'd be able to like swim and explore stuff underwater maybe that would that would have been cool uh, i don't think it's going to take away from the game a lot but it was just like a eh. but other than that the game was very good it was definitely fun nobody's going to be disappointed by this game and i don't think anyone would be surprised at me saying that either uh, people know it's going to be good people are already hyped about it i don't think anything more needs to be said on zelda so the next game that i want to talk about is one two switch now this it essentially is a tech demo slash party games type deal. Think of like the Wii Sports, you know, games games like that, the compilation games that normally come bundled with the system, except this one doesn't and it comes separately and it's 45 quid. I don't think anyone's going to go out and buy that for 45 quid unless, I don't know, maybe like, maybe as like a family friendly game as, or like a little party game, it could be fun. Uh, but to my mind, this was essentially designed entirely to just show off some of the stuff that you could do with the system uh, so some of the ways you could use the controls basically there was a there was like a wild west cowboy game where you draw your console you, you have like a joy con controller each you turn around and then you got to try and shoot each other you know it, it was kind of fun it was all like it was all quite exciting there was another one where you were a samurai uh, so one player has to hold their joy con in one hand and get ready and the other person has to hold it above their head like it's a sword and then that person swings real quick and the other person has to try and clap and basically catch the sword before it hits them. Uh, it, it, all of those games had kind of like a rock, paper, scissors feel. You know, it's kind of like you just stare at your opponent. You're not really looking at the screen. And you're like trying to trying to like beat what they're going to do and guess when they're going to move. It was quite fun, but I can see it getting boring very quickly. Maybe a bit of fun over a few drinks at a party or something like that. Uh, but most of those games were kind of like, yeah, okay. No one's going to be excited about them. 
but they also did a pretty good job of showing some of the functionality that the system has. So the next game, now this is probably the one that I'm most excited about actually, and that was ARMS. So ARMS, I saw the trailer for this, I watched it a few times, I saw the, the sort of uh, event that they streamed, and I kind of thought, eh, I, I kind of looked at it and thought, oh, they've kind of like tried to capture the, the vibe, like the, the colourfulness and the playfulness of Splatoon and like build another game like based on that. It looked kind of gimmicky. I'll be honest, I, I, I looked at it before I went and played it and I thought this game's, yeah, it's going to be crap. I thought, <laughs> you know, I thought, yeah, it might be fun for a couple of minutes. It, it looks terrible. Actually going and playing it. I was I like right up until I got on it. I was playing it. I was looking at other people play it. I thought, yeah, this this isn't going to be good. And then I started playing it, and it is it, it just blew me away. The controls are so perfect. Like the the motion control, the way it feels, the vibrate feedback, the movement in the game. Like everything just feels so spot on. Like so slick, so fluid, so perfectly done. That playing it was just a pure joy, and it was incredibly addictive. Like we had a couple of fights, me and my girlfriend, and I didn't want to like put it down. Like obviously, there's a queue of people behind us, so you only get a couple of minutes. Uh, and you know, maybe you'd think, oh yeah, but you only played it for a while. I'm sure it would get boring. It really doesn't feel like it. It really feels like one of those games that has every single one of the elements that's needed to make one of these super popular, uh, like highly competitive esports online type games that people were just going to play all the time. It really did feel like that. Uh, I'm I'm expecting pretty big things from ARMS. It was a lot of fun to play. It was definitely my biggest like surprise going into the event. I didn't think it was going to be good. I thought it was going to be terrible. I played it and I just couldn't get enough of it. It's fantastic. It's probably the game I'm now most excited about coming out on the Switch. I can't wait to play it some more. Uh, th there was a, like, there's a really cool... The way the punching works in the game is like really cool. So if you don't know what the game is, uh, you, it's basically a fighting game, but instead of just a regular fighting game, you use the motion controls to punch, but your arms basically shoot out like big springs, almost like a space jam where Michael Jordan's arms like stretch out. It's like that kind of thing. Uh, and you can like curve them. You can like grab, you can do throws, like you can, you can curve one and punch straight with the other. There's all kinds of different like tactics you can use. Uh, and the movement basically works by just moving the controls both left to go left, both right to go right, move them both, tilt them back to jump backwards. And you're basically moving like dashes. So you dash left, dash right, dash left, dash right. And it just like, it, it, it's weird. It's hard to explain. It, it doesn't sound great. And when you look at, look at it on a screen or watch the trailer, it didn't look amazing. But playing it was just something else. It was... It was definitely one to watch, and it was definitely one that I was pleasantly surprised by. So keep an eye on ARMS. It's, it's going to be pretty good. And for God's sake, please stop making the are they also going to bring out legs as a DLC joke. I must have seen about 20 YouTubers make that same joke. Stop. It's done. Just stop that joke, okay? Okay, so that was ARMS. Uh, the next games... Well, the, the other games... There's a couple of... There's a few other games that I played that were like ports so like i mentioned earlier disgaea uh, there's a sonic game dance dance revolution or something like that none of those were really anything to get excited about they're games that are already out on other consoles they were okay they were fine it's good that there was some stuff that's being ported from other consoles other third parties but none of it was great so i'm not going to go into too much detail about it if you know those games then you're already like familiar with them if you don't know about them they're probably not the kind of games that you're going to get hyped up about anyway now, the games that I didn't get a chance to play, so Splatoon 2 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and there were two reasons for this. One, as I mentioned, the queues were absolutely ridiculous, and there were just other games that I wanted to play more. And the other thing was, I know I'm going to like them. I know they're going to be good games. I also know they're not going to be anything super different from the ones that have come before. So Splatoon 2, if you're a Splatoon fan, you're going to love it. It's going to be great. It's going to improve on the first one. It looks good. It's going to be... It's basically going to be the next one like any other next one game sequel you know it's going to be the next version they're going to add different game modes probably different weapons it's going to be the same but a little bit better hopefully a slight improvement and it's going to be the same for mario kart 8 mario kart 8 deluxe is actually almost a port so splatoon 2 is a whole new game it's not a port of splatoon 1 which is kind of cool i was expecting them just to port splatoon 1 Kind of weird that they haven't also decided to port Splatoon 1. Uh, maybe they're still hoping some people will buy the Wii U. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, Splatoon 2 is a new game. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is kind of a port. It's, well, it's kind of like a remastered special edition version. Uh, but they've also added in some extra stuff. So I think there's like a new battle mode. And you can now hold two weapons instead of one. That could be kind of fun to play with. So it's kind of like a little bit of an upgrade to Mario Kart 8. If you didn't buy the Wii U, uh, and a lot of people didn't, judging by how it sold, then Mario Kart is a no brainer is when you're going to get if you've already got mario kart 8 on the wii u and you're going to keep the system 
maybe it's not worth it. If you're going to sell your Wii U, you're probably going to crave a Mario Kart game anyway, so you're going to end up buying it again. I don't think there'll be any major surprises, and I think it will do just as well as Mario Kart always does. Uh, so the other game, Mario Odyssey, so I mentioned we didn't get to play it, but we did get to see some of it. Uh, I just want to say, like, everyone's complaining about this city level looking like 06 Sonic, and it looks terrible. Why have they put Mario in, like, the real world? That's just one level. Uh, all the other levels that we got to see looked, like, looked really beautiful, actually. It looked like a, a massive improvement on any Mario game I've ever seen in terms of how good it looked. The graphics looked beautiful, the settings looked beautiful, like there was a forest one, there was like a pink flowers, there, there were loads of like different settings and they all looked pretty magical and very Mario-esque. The city one I think is just like one small part of the game, it's going to be probably a level or a world or something. Uh, if you don't like it, don't worry, the rest of the game looks like a Mario game as you'd like come to know and love and as you'd expect. Um, the, there's the new gameplay feature, the, the new like function in the game is where you use your hat as a weapon, that was kind of odd. Um, <laughs> and the 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 uh, the cardboard cutout, which I've I've probably shown in this video already of me standing next to it, they have of Mario. His hair looks almost like auburn ginger. It was it was a bit of a weird hairdo for Mario. Not really what I expected. Uh, <laughs> I guess they've tried to make him look a bit more millennial or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the throwing the hat thing. I mean, it looks pretty cool. You can also like th there's a bit where he throws the hat and then jumps on it to get to another platform. I mean, I'm sure, like, it's a Mario game, they know what they're doing, the platforming always feels absolutely solid in these games, they've got a more powerful system than ever before this time, so, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be a very good addition to the Mario series, and nobody doubts it's going to sell well, it's a Mario game, it's brand new, it's on a new system, people are going to be excited about it, and it's going to do well. Uh, so that was, that was kind of it in terms of the games that I've got to play so far. Uh, like I say, the main disappointment for me was that I didn't get to try out Skyrim, which is kind of odd, because I've played Skyrim a hundred thousand times, uh, but I just wanted to see how it worked on the Switch, and the portable stuff, and what we could look forward to in terms of other similar sort of games getting ported over uh, to be able to play portably, but it wasn't there. Don't know why. What's going on? Sort it out, Nintendo. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the games. I guess the only other thing is a few final thoughts that I have on the system and the event as a whole. And the first thing I have to say is the same thing everyone's sort of saying and is kind of worried about, I guess, at the moment. Or if you hate Nintendo, then you're probably laughing about. Um, is, is the launch lineup... It's very, very slim. There's not much there to get excited about. There are a few things like Zelda. Basically Zelda. Zelda is the game that people are excited about. There's not much coming out at launch or immediately after that looks fantastic. Uh, there are a couple of good games spread out throughout the first year that we know about. Uh, and hopefully a load more are going to be coming that we don't know about. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that the launch lineup is not going to be a sign of things to come like it was with the Wii U. Now, the next thing that I kind of want to mention very briefly is... Skyrim, games like Skyrim, so Skyrim for me, I'm hugely excited about Skyrim being able to play portable. I really think they've captured something, if they can pull it off properly and they can add a lot more games to the library, they've captured something incredible here to be able to play those kind of games on a handheld system, away from home, with no constraints. That is going to be, that could be like something that just changes the way gaming works from now on. It could get people so excited. It could get people hooked. And like Another one they've announced, so FIFA. So I'm not really a FIFA fan, but look how popular FIFA is as a game. Just type FIFA into YouTube. There's a billion people playing and watching FIFA all the time. It's a hugely popular game. Now, those people are going to... I imagine anyone that plays FIFA, if you told them, right, you can have console quality FIFA at your fingertips whenever you're traveling, wherever you're away from home, whenever you're at a mate's house, whenever you're out of the park, whenever you're at work on a break... You can play, you get your FIFA fix on the go. That alone, like, to people that are fans of FIFA, that could be a reason enough to go and pick up the console. I mean, think how many hours people play FIFA for. Spending £299 on a system that's going to let you do that any way you want. I mean, you're going to get your money's worth out of it just from one game like that. So I think th these are the kind of games that are coming in that are hugely popular, that people love, that people would love to be able to play on the go, that could really boost the sales and make this system a big success. And I hope that does happen, because a big a big part of the success of this system is going to be what other third-party games come to the system. If they can nail that, and they've never been able to nail that before, so that if is a very, very big if. People are excited this time. People are thinking that they might be able to do it. The launch lineup has got other people very worried that maybe they're not going to be able to deliver on that promise. But I, all I can say is I really hope they manage to get it this time. It will be good for everybody if they can do that, and we can start having these really great console games on the Switch, and we've basically got three big console companies then competing with each other. That's only going to be a good thing for us. It's going to be better games, it's going to be cheaper prices probably, it's going to be, it's just going to be a good thing. 
And the other thing that I wanted to mention is there's no region lock. So finally, there's there's a Nintendo system where we can import games to Japan from other countries, from like America, for example, if you're here in the UK. It doesn't matter where the game comes from, there's going to be no constraints on what system you can play it on. So if there's an import title, if there's a Japan-only title, if there's a title that comes out first in the US or something and you really want to get it now, like you can order it, get it delivered, and play it on your console in the UK or whatever country you're in, and it does not matter. There's no restriction there. That is a massively good thing that they've done, and I'm happy about that. It's a good one to just mention and not forget that, yeah, they're, they're sort of looking out for us here. This is a good thing. Uh, now, the other thing that's kind of got me excited, I've already said ARMS is the game I'm most excited about, but just ARMS as a thing has got me excited about Nintendo again, because after Splatoon doing so well, it really seems like they're thinking, okay, we can make these new games, we can start bringing out loads of new stuff, new ideas, let's bring back great like Nintendo first party games, and hopefully, you know, Splatoon definitely proves that they can do it. Arms, from what I've seen, do you know what? Despite what it first looked like and what I first thought, after playing it, I am really excited about. If they could keep hitting game after game like this that that ends up being really good and like out of nowhere. I mean, Arms has come out of nowhere. No one had heard of Arms. No one was expecting Arms. Like nobody was excited about it. And then bam, it just comes out. And actually, now that I've played it, wow. I mean, this could be a really great thing. So if they can keep doing that, that could that could be so good for Nintendo because it's something they don't seem to have done like for a very long. Like what was the what was the last Nintendo new IP other than Splatoon? Was it like Pikmin? I don't even know. It, it, like. There's a big gap between when they're bringing out brand new stuff instead of just bringing out the next Mario or the next Zelda, which we're still excited about. But to have new games as well is is a very positive thing for Nintendo to be doing, and it's something I'm excited about. Uh, so that's that's kind of it for my final thoughts. That's hopefully that's given you a good insight into the system that maybe you've not got from other videos and announcements because I've actually got to play it hands on. I was actually at the event and and I got to sort of get a, a, a really good feel for what the system's going to be like. Uh, sorry if I've waffled on a bit. I mean, there's a lot to cover and it's kind of like it's all still like exciting and hazy in my mind. It was only a couple of days ago. There's still a lot that I'm thinking about. There's still loads of stuff that I'm thinking about that could come in the future. There's a lot there to cover, but hopefully I've given you a good insight into Nintendo, what they're thinking at the minute, and what to expect from the Switch. Uh, I have pre-ordered my console, so for better or for worse, I'm going to be getting it when it comes out. Hopefully there's going to be some new games coming out, because at the minute, like I say, there's not much to get me excited. Uh, but either way, you'll probably hear more about the Switch on my channel as it gets closer to the time. And who knows, if Nintendo sort their shit out, maybe I'll even do some gameplays on the channel uh, from some Switch games. I would love to demo ARMS on the channel, that'd be great. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, as always, guys, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in a future episode. Take care of yourselves, and peace. Peace.